right. Welcome, 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 everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Vio Dojo's Ask the Sensei. I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the Vio Dojo back in Burbank, finally. Um, and this is our monthly free Q&A um, where we bring together myself, our is Deemed home studio master Dan Leonard and a um, and a wonderful colleague of ours from different aspects of the voiceover community to answer your questions. Um, it really is an opportunity for you to um, just ask whatever is on your mind as we're on our journey, no matter where we're on our journey, if we've been doing this for three months or 30 years, there's always that next question, that next thing, like what, what is it that you don't know? And we're just saying, uh, as we were waiting for everyone to come on, that getting into the habit of being able to articulate questions clearly, and then without any hesitation, find the places to ask them is something that serves you not only in your voiceover career, but in life in general. So we're, we're happy to have this be a place that can be a destination each month for you to get answers. Um, today, we are happy to welcome back Sonia Smith of Backstage stage so many it's it's so interesting things are changing so fast in all of the realms of all of the businesses that it's only been you said your baby six months so he was in he was imminent when we saw you last so within the last year within the last six months uh, six months to a year what else has been going on and how can we all be um working together and and uh um supporting each other so um awesome we are joined of course by jeffrey gilbank our amazing dojo team member who makes everything go here so um um that's a little bit about me we'll have dan introduce himself we'll have sonia talk a little bit about what's going on the backstage and the most important thing about this call is your questions so um, you can start putting them into the chat and uh, Jeffrey will call on you to say them into the into the room so we get your beautiful voices in the room. And we will answer as many questions as we can within the hour. And then usually we do a little after after talk uh, after time if uh, if our guests have time. Um, so we'll stop at the top of the hour to honor that. And then if if you have other questions or we'll, we'll see how it rolls, uh, there might be a little after time after. So awesome. So uh, Dan, how are you and welcome and would you introduce yourself and I'm pretty good. I'm Dan Leonard, home studio master. If you have a question on the overwhelming, intimidating area of your home studio, which is not rocket science, uh, <laughs> throw it into the chat room and uh, I will be happy to answer those questions as honestly as I can. Uh, and but watch out, I have an attitude this morning. Uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> attitude plus, then <laughs> we will we will navigate, navigate. So, yes, excellent. Don't, don't let that discourage you, though. Okay, if you can make it through this, if you can grab this acorn from Dan's hand, <laughs> awesome. And Sonia, great to see you again. Um, tell us, tell us uh, who you are and what's what's up at backstage. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. My name is Sonia Smith, and I am a voiceover casting specialist at Backstage. I a little bit about me is um, I started my voiceover journey as a voiceover artist. I actually studied philosophy in school, of all things, and <laughs> my final year, yeah, so random, had no idea what I wanted to do, but I was a very curious person. Um, in my final year, I took a speech class and my speech professor told me that I had a lovely voice and that I should do something with it. And he introduced me to a company called Voices.com, which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, and so, oh, hello. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> sorry, muting. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> and so I uh, dabbled in uh, voice acting 
and quickly realized that voice acting is a lot harder than it sounds and uh, saw that Voices.com was hiring at the time and thought, what better way to learn about the industry than work for them? And I'm from Canada um, and Voices.com is based in London, Ontario. So that's where I'm from where I went to school. So I joined them and worked there for four, three to four years ish and kind of learned everything about kind of that world, the online casting platform world and, um, loved it. Absolutely loved it. But, um, took a little break from that and just kind of did my own thing for a few years. Um, and then backstage approached me in 2020 and asked if I wanted to join their team to help grow voiceover at backstage. So backstage is an online casting platform. I added a link to it in the chat should be pinned somewhere. Um, We've been around since 1960. We started as a magazine publication, interviewing celebrities and industry pros as an educational resource for the everyday actor. Um, Backstage was really on camera focused, um, theater focused for a long time. Voiceover was always there, but never really a priority or a main focus area. And then enter 2020 and the world of COVID and remote work and um, Backstage really wanted to, to grow voiceover and in that area as an offering to all of their actor database and members and everyone in the world. Um, so they brought me onto the team to help help grow that side of the platform. So I've been at Backstage, like I said, since 2020. um, And we've really, I think, grown the um, voiceover profile quite significantly and and grown our brand quite significantly. I was mentioning to Tish um, and Jeffrey and Dan before you all came on that over the past year or so, Um, We've made a few acquisitions. So Backstage has acquired um, the Mandy platform as well as Star Now and Voice123. And we are currently migrating our platform um, with Mandy and Star Now. So really expanding our global reach into Europe and into Australia. Um, And we also were recently acquired by you may or may not know them, but Cast and Crew, the payroll company, um, and they are expanding their um, platform as well. So lots of mergers and acquisitions and change. Yeah, things happening over at Backstage. Um, And there's, you know, with growth comes growing pains that we've been um, navigating. Um, But I do believe that through it, we will um, be able to offer a lot more to the community um, but I'm excited to be here and to answer any questions that you have about backstage. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Um, a little bit more about my role about backstage, just specifically, is I'm a uh, I work in biz dev, so my job is to bring more more voiceover jobs to the platform. I don't make any casting decisions myself. Um, I'm just trying to bring as many jobs to the platform as possible. So that's kind of my forte is kind of from the client's perspective. But again, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Ah, this is this is fantastic. And I thought I just thought of something I was going to say and I forgot. Um, Yeah, that that things are switching so fast. That's when things are switching so fast and blending and becoming um, is is really, really powerful. Um, All right. Well, my question will come back to me. And um, let's see. Let's get started with some questions here. Absolutely. Um, Oh, yeah. me? Uh, no, uh, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? We're actually, I have you in order. I'll call on you when uh, we get to you. We have a few questions that popped in right before you, though. Okay. All right. Uh, great. So our first question comes from John Rawls. I hope I said that last name right. John Rawls. Close enough. <laughs> How do we say Close your name, enough. John? Uh, oh. Hi, Jeffrey and everybody. Hi, thanks for letting us all sit in on this. Uh, really, this is for Dan. Um, 
what's the difference between normalizing and quantizing? And I, I've gotten a few um, responses back to another question about does anyone use normalizer or, or quantizing for audition tracks? So, Dan, can, can you explain to me, you know, what the difference is? Uh, what are people telling you? Because everybody has different definitions of, of what certain things are. Well, no, see, that's, that's nobody's, nobody, I, I, let me rephrase. Um, no one's coming back and going, John quantizes this or whatever is that. Um, I had asked the, the group if they're using like normalization or that kind of stuff. And a few people have hit me back, but I'm not really sure that there's any, any difference. And I, and maybe you could clear that up for us. Well, I would take the word quantization and take an eraser and just sort of get rid of that because that people throw out words to intimidate you. They throw out words to throw out misinformation to throw you down a technological rabbit hole. So quantization means something to some engineer somewhere that has nothing to do with you in your in your closet. Uh, normalization is taking the hottest peak in your file and raising the entire volume of the file to where the hottest peak is at minus three. The thing is, if you record properly and you normalize to minus three, it really shouldn't do anything. It means you recorded it properly up front, which is really what we're trying to get people to achieve is getting it right up front and not relying on all sorts of technology to, mm -hmm. to intellectually dishonestly change who you are and what your voice sounds like. The idea of a home voiceover studio is not to make you sound great. It's to make you sound like you. And we don't talk to other people through normalization or quantitization, even though whatever, whatever they were referring to and that sort of thing, it may have to do with uh, using processing and things along those lines. But I would say when you record, try and get it as hot as you can. When we've, and we've discussed here, uh, always in the green, always in the yellow, an occasional flash of red not at this, luffs this, that, all these terms that mean absolutely nothing to anybody except engineers. They don't understand that what you're doing in your closet or in your booth, they just want a nice clean thing. And that's all that you really need to worry about. Now, when you do normalize, if you are using some processing, if your levels are a little low, and I'm not talking like down at minus 15 or minus 12, I'm talking like if it's just a little bit too small, you could normalize to minus three and it will make it sound a little bit fuller. Uh, after you do some processing, you can normalize to minus three. But don't obsess about all of the numbers and the lingo and, and all of the terminology in there. Determine, right, thank you. determine what the volume of your of your your uh, file is and then move from there. Excellent, thank you, Dan. Well, excellent. And John, it's awesome to have you here because you, br you bring in technical questions at a high level. So if anyone felt like they were just in another country and uh, <laughs> people are talking really, really fast and you just want a cup of coffee, um, that's OK. That's why we're here. And that's why we love working with Dan, because he's able to go slow down. What's what what is what are we saying? This is the basic gist of what we're saying. And don't worry about this. Do worry about that. So um, so hopefully, I mean, I would recommend listening to the recording of this if the if that just went like whoom and then your heart started beating faster. Um, it's okay. Just like t listen back to this and then slow down and translate each thing or think about it because it just washed over. These are things that we talk about in terms of sound and, and sound engineering and things. So just you just heard a great high level conversation of people who are very fluent in sound engineering. So if you're just freaked out, don't worry, because it'll come. The more you listen, the more you ask, ask questions and be around people who are talking about it, the more you're doing it yourself, you'll understand what all these things are. And um, then Dan will always tell you, don't worry about that. <laughs> which is awesome so yay thank you dan thank you thank you john who's next jeffrey all right next up we have charles ardman charles oh, good to see oh, you come on in and breathe how are you charles hey i'm doing well how are you good 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 okay uh hi all sonia quick question i was uh i wanted to ask if you all had plans to share a little more detail about each audition 
that a uh, that a member either uh, is considering submitting or, or has already submitted. For example, uh, how many how many auditions have been submitted already as of the time I'm looking at it, and uh, when I submit one, has my audition been listened to? Yeah, those are great questions. At this time, I'm not aware of us implementing those features on Backstage. Um, Backstage really tries to be uh, an equal opportunist for all talent on site, um, talent that are just getting started and talent that are pros. Um, and they want all talent to to feel like they have every opportunity to audition and be heard and find work. Um, and so they we we try to keep it as equal as possible for everybody on the site. And so we have... hello, oh, not, not me. <laughs> um, so we haven't implemented anything like that, and I I don't believe it's on the roadmap. Again, I don't, I'm not part of the engineering team. I'm part of the business, business development team. So I don't get insight into those conversations, but nothing that I'm aware of as of now, Charles. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Excellent. I know what I was going to say earlier. Um, you, Sonia, are um, in charge of developing relationships with clients for yeah. to create resources for all of us to develop uh to to be connected with those clients and clients to be able to easily find so um at some point it might be interesting to hear like your approach because each of us as an individual business also need to be thinking like you are as a business development person um so that, that's what i was going to say before all right uh yay jeffrey what other questions do we have next question is from our friend terry briscoe terry <laughs> come on in terry he's an ask the same hey, 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 how y'all doing <laughs> uh, thanks for taking my question um sonia i was wondering if you you noticed that the clients are requesting more of the conversational read, which has been in style over the last like half a decade, or if it's moving back towards a more stylized read like it was before? That's a great question. Um, I think I've noticed, it really depends on the project, to be honest, um, and who the audience is that they're trying to speak to. I think the most important thing and what a lot of clients are asking for is authenticity. They just want an authentic voice, um, something that sounds relatable. Um, and I think maybe they're mo we're moving from the words conversational and friend friendly to authentic and relatable. Um, but it really depends on the project and what you're applying for. And if is if is it a corporate reader, is it an animation, you know, character role? Obviously, for those roles, um, they're more they're more different. There's different styles and requests there. But I think overall, in general, authenticity is the name of the game these mm -hmm. days. Doesn't that mean the same thing? I mean, let's be, <laughs> let's be honest. They just change the words. It means the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think just being your being yourself and you, with your voice, I think is is what comes across, and people want to just hear you in your voice, not you sounding like someone or something else. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was also going to say that I think even when something has uh, is required, of, you know, the sound of something else, the more that you can be authentically you, maybe in a nicer suit or um you know that that your shirt is pressed and you have a pleat in your in your khakis um it's still you just a little more polished rather than this sound of because sound of is inauthentic sound of is just like here's some words that are sounding like this right um so i think i think that authenticity thinking of it as authenticity no matter what and then what level of polish is is required to deliver this job what would you wear to that job right is a great way to think about it right because then we don't get sometimes i talk about house coat lady sound welcome to this nice place it sounds so pleasant doesn't it because i'm the house coat lady right but you don't know anything about me right yeah 
Good, good, good. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? All right. Next up, we have, uh, I hope I'm saying this correctly, uh, Farah. Farah. Uh, Hadar. Hey, Hadar. Hey. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for taking my question. Um, so my question is for Sonia. Sonia, uh, I'm kind of like, as a voiceover artist, obviously we pay for these services, voices one, two, three, voices, you know, um, backstage. And I just wanted, since you've worked for voices and now you're working for backstage and now backstage owns voices one, two, three, <laughs> I was wondering like, what is the difference between, for example, a voices or a backstage? Like as a voiceover artist, why would I do one over the other or should I be on both? That's a great question. That is a great question. And I, honestly, I, I do believe that each of the platforms have, have their own perks and benefits and they work well for different actors, all of them across the board from Fiverr, Voice123, Voices, all of them, you know, the whole thing. Um, I'll speak to backstage and I'll speak to voice one, two, three, because those are the ones that I I'm family with right now. <laughs> um, backstage is a great place for voiceover talent. And, um, so if you're interested in exploring all parts of, um, the entertainment industry on camera, UGC content creation, um, even if you wanted to dabble in the crew side and offering some some crew abilities as well, animation or um, sound editing or things like that, Backstage is a one-stop shop for it all. And um, you have access to it all with your one membership fee, which is really beneficial because it's a low cost and you get access to the, the full gamut of all types. For example, um, you can have a regular on-camera profile, a voiceover profile, and a crew profile for the one price. So um, that's, I, I believe, to be the benefit of backstage. Um, for voice one, two, three, I think it's a great it's a great place to learn. It's a great place to find work. I know a lot of actors find work and build relationships with clients there. Um, with that being said, your membership dictates your the roles and the jobs that you're going to see right so if you're just trying to try it out you know it's maybe not the greatest place whereas backstage is more of a place for you um but if you are a committed professional you know inv investing in your voiceover career voice one two is a great voice one two three is a great place for that so that that's kind of my answer to you know, the benefits of each platform and their memberships and why you would pay for both or all. Yeah. And Thank I love you. That. That's, a, that's a great, great response. And then I think it goes back to the, to the core, the core thing is that each of us are um, establishing, establishing, growing and um, developing our own businesses, as we were saying earlier. So it really is a matter of what is your what is your business plan like what what is your business vision how, what are you what are you growing how are you growing your business what is your what is the markets that you're working in um how uh, you know do do you like how how are you approaching your business and then each of these platforms are potential ways of creating revenue streams and you as a as a business you as your own ceo need to figure out where is my time where is my time and um, and uh, investment most impactful for getting to where I want to go, or is uh, you know uh, or is this I, I'm approaching this as a stepping stone to what I want? So and then you can always make another decision as a business owner to re up or not re up. You know, see how it works. So um, yeah, great. I think I think all of the platforms kind of speak to different areas of the industry too, right? Like it, you'll see different jobs on the different platforms as well. So I think depending on where, what part of the voiceover industry you want to work in will dictate which platforms you join and which yeah. business mm -hmm. roles you take, you know, in your business plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And always just remembering we're driving the car. No, nothing's being done to us. We're driving the car. We make choices about who we're collaborating with and stuff like that. So, yeah. Awesome. 
Awesome. Uh, Jeffrey, who's next? Uh, I actually have a question from a, I uh, hope I'm saying this right, Dan Leonard? Dan Leonard? Uh, oh, yeah. I've heard of him. <laughs> as, as someone who's been doing this since literally the Ford or Carter administration, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, this is a question about demos. And, you know, I've been doing them for a long time since, you know, they were on reel to reel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How Thank important. Thank you. Yeah. How important are demos? Because there is a, a huge market out there of people saying, I can make you a demo. And they're all over the place. They're of different quality. And the bottom line to me, and I'll also mention that we have at world-voices.org, if you become a member, we have a free demo player that will play all of your demos, which is really kind of nice. Uh, but how important is a demo to somebody who's on one of your sites, who's, who's, on, who's on backstage? Are clients going in there going, I really like this demo. I just don't buy that. I just find that, you know, it's what have you done for me lately? And the audition you do for a particular job is what's going to book you the gig. Not to say that demos aren't important, but I would like to hear what your thoughts are on demos and how many should people should have and how do you not confuse all your clients with all of the genres that you do? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I do think demos have value. Um, however, I do believe that majority of the jobs being booked are with your audition. Um, not from your demo. With that being said, I think having, having a demo that highlights your ability. So your corporate reads, your multiple language, different languages that you can speak in, um, and maybe a character reel or something like that, like showing your range in your business, again, whichever business route you've decided to take and explore, I think that's kind of like, it's like kind of like your resume of here's what I can do. And it's nice for an employer to go and see what you've done and what things that you can do. With that being said, employers find it really hard to pick and hire a talent just from their demos because a lot of the times they are professionally pr produced and it's not indicative of your actual home studio sound. So they want to hear you reading their script, um, using their direction in your studio so they can actually properly vet you for that job. And so, yeah, is that, does that answer your question? Well, I totally agree. I mean, that's the way <laughs> I've always looked at it, uh, you know, because people tend to obsess about, I got to have a demo. Well, yeah, you have to have a demo. It has to be professionally produced. But I find that there are a lot of demo producers out there that are really trying to sell the fact that they did a demo for somebody as opposed to highlighting the voice of the person that they're actually trying to do a demo for. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then, and it's, and as you said, it's got to sound like what you can produce out of your own home studio. And mm -hmm. generally, I have very few demos I've heard actually allow you to do that. So just yeah. a little thought on that. And then somebody asked another question about, about clips uh, on a, on a demo uh, individual cuts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and again, it's something you experiment with and you find what works best for you, but in relationship to backstage, I, I think that, that Sonia pretty much hit it on the head. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, so many layers in this, in this little exploration here. So first of all, um, understanding what a demo is, a demo is something that serves the client to be able to say, oh, this is this, I can see what this person, I can hear, I can feel what this person is, is able to deliver. I think a, a demo also, I'm not sure how this metaphor goes, but if you hire a plumbing company and they show up in a truck that has their logo on it because they, you know, established in da 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 so and so and and daughters or whatever, um, but they show up in a truck because this is what they do and they show up equipped with doing not to say that showing up in your you know beat up chevy with a magnetized sticker as a plumber it doesn't mean that you're not a good plumber but what as a client 
what is a client does it do to you like oh this is an established business this is someone who has the tools of the trade so i think that's a way to think about it and then i think another layer here is um <clears throat> Uh, there's a layer of getting your audition skills up to a competitive level. And in, in some realms of these, that's what gets you in the game. Then there's this, uh, another layer of what can you do to create samples? I think creating samples is a, is a precursor to being prepared for your professional demo. Or if you're going into a new realm, I might create a sample of my audio book, you know, of my audiobook thing or a sample of something, something that you put together yourself, but don't think of it as this is my demo. This is my, you know, this is my brochure that I'm presenting my whole thing. Um, so I think there's a couple, there's a bunch of layers that we just opened up and then understanding uh, what serves what serves the client in which platform, right? So there's not just one thing that works for everything, right? So you have to understand how does this part of the business work? How do we play this game? Um, and then I think also the clips, the clips is another thing. Um, think, always think of yourself as the busy client. Okay, I need to find a voice for da 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 da. Don't care, don't care, don't care. This is what I want. So if I'm able to hone in on today, and tomorrow, the thing that was honed in on might be the thing that's in the don't care pile because that's not what I'm looking for here, right? So really great question that just so much things to think about. So great, great, great. Um, awesome, who's next? All right, next on the list, we have uh, Kevin, Kevin Ani, uh, if you'd like to come in and pose your question. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. Right then. So, um, a question about animation then. So, I heard, I've seen the information that you do the animations then also, right? On backstage, you mean? Yeah, the, and on anything. Animation oppor opportunities? Sonia, does backstage have animation opportunities? Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, back, at, at backstage, we actually partner with animation programs, animation schools across North America. And we do casting webinars with the animation students, teaching them tips and tricks on how to cast the best voices for their projects. And then we offer backstage as a resource to cast. A lot of animation projects are unpaid from these students. However, they're a great future relationship builder because these students are going to be the creators of tomorrow and be employed by the companies that you want to work for. So we see it as a win-win situation for the students and for our talent. And so, yes, Backstage is a great place for animation projects. And especially as you as you're developing your you as you're developing your animation uh, portfolio business, um, you're building a relationship with the people who are also building theirs. Um, and and uh, uh, yeah, as an on camera actor, I didn't do a lot of I didn't do a lot of uh, student films, but uh, I happened to get cast in one. Um, that was a thesis project by a couple of young men called the Duffer Brothers. Um, and so when Stranger Things came out, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I know those guys. <laughs> so it does, it does work, it does work like that. Um, yeah, good, good, good. Excellent, great question, Kevin. Um, who is next? Oh, just one more thing, one more thing. Because um, yes. um, I'm gonna be speaking to you tomorrow, guys. Okay, well, we can talk about that. We can talk about that. Uh, we can talk about that offline. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That's great. Um, and uh, one, one other thing that I wanted to uh, also riff on what we just talked about is business development. This this is how how do we create relationships with people that will last during our long, lifelong career, and then if we meet, if we meet the animators and you know become the person who creates this the voice of this and then carries on that's business development that's relationship building and th i think that's a mindset 
that is a mindset that's really, really important. I think we get very audition oriented. How many auditions am I getting? How many auditions? Are blah, 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 when really all we need is one relationship, <laughs> one relationship that become the go-to person, right? That's what we're really, that's what really builds su sustained successful careers. Because an audition here and an audition here doesn't add up in the same way. It can, but it's harder and it takes longer. And yeah, okay. Let's keep on going. We've got a good groove here today. We sure do. Um, and Kevin, I'm only going to lower your hand so that if you have another question, I can keep track of it better. But thank you so much. We're so glad to have you join us again. Um, all right. Next up, we have um, uh, Andrea. Andrea Al. Or Al, maybe. Hi there. You know what? I don't know why my picture isn't showing. So That's I okay. apologize. <laughs> we can hear you. Okay, good. Because I'm I I I'm not in a place where I can turn no on worries. my camera. No worries. What's your question? Okay, so two. Well, one, someone asked my question already, which was great What's about having question? backstage and voice one, two, three. But I also have another question since that one was answered. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's like two part. So, how <laughs> do I clean up my searches? And this might be too technical of a question for this group. I'm not sure. But I've got so many searches. I'm getting so many emails from backstage, and I don't know. You know, I don't know why. And I can only assume that I just have too many searches going. Is there someone specific to talk to, or just chat with the um, the people? You know, you have your chat thing on the side of the page. Yeah. So sure. yeah, I don't know if this is a question for you. I Paul, if it's not, you can you can breeze past it. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. This. I mean, the search the search filter. And the search settings are important because that's going to bring the jobs to your inbox. So you want them to be set up right. And you don't want to feel overwhelmed by yes. the jobs that you're getting and you want to be getting the right one. So absolutely important question you're asking. Um, uh, definitely chat with the chat bot um, there. Um, if they are not able to help you as sometimes those, you know, chat, you, who knows, you're, you know, who is answering your question. Right. Um, you can email customers at backstage.com. That will take you to our customer service team specifically who can um, help address that question. Um, if you go to the casting calls page um, that where you set up your saved search alerts, mm -hmm. you can see them all at the bottom of that filter panel. You oh, okay. Have to delete some that are <laughs> probably you, or maybe delete them all and re redo them. Okay. Um, reset them because I think that sometimes, um, yeah, you know, things can change on the platform, and then you're getting things that you you don't want. So exactly. go go to that page and revisit them and uh, edit them there. Okay, and you said customers with an S at backstage.com. That's right. Okay, and just one more quick question. When we post samples, after a certain point, we are required to pay, correct? What is it, $11 a minute? Or am I confusing you with actor's access? I might be. Yeah, that's that's not that's, us. Okay, good. Okay, then that question doesn't count. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. And um, one, one other thing to bring up, um, Sonia's going to be joining us. The other th One of the other things that we do during the course of a month at... Um, at the dojo is um, called Get to Know VO, uh, which is the third Wednesday of the month in this time slot. So you can add that to your calendar. Um, and uh, Sonia's going to be back and talking a little bit more about nuts and bolts and practicalities and guiding through how to optimize your backstage experience on Get to Know VO um, two Wednesdays from now. So this is great to open up the questions and then that will be an opportunity to get to work a little bit more hands-on and uh, be able to go into questions and not only like, okay, this is the, you know, to see it, to see it all working. So hopefully you'll, you'll all um, join us for that as well. Thank and you. That's awesome to know. Thanks very much, you guys. Yeah. What else, Jeffrey? Who else we got? Great. Uh, next up, we have Tom Cooper. Tom Cooper, come on in. The man, the myth. Oh. <laughs> hey. uh, Sonia, how are you? I'm great, Tom. How are I, you? I have a question for you about 
statistics. Um, and I'm sure you guys have a lot of proprietary statistics. I am curious if you maintain a percentage of jobs done by what percentage of actors. For example, 10% of the actors do 70% of the work or 20% of the actors do 45% of the work. Is there something um, like that you can share? Um, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I'm clear on the question. So how if, are you saying like how many talent profiles? 10, we ten, Well, 10% of your talent profiles do 30% of the work or 40% uh, of the work. Yeah. We don't have insight into that. Really? On backstage. No, we don't. Um, backstage is really about connecting um, the creators to the talent directly. So we do not manage. We do. We have no insight if, if, or who got hired on backstage, mm -hmm. that would be great insight for us to have. And we'd love to have that knowledge right now uh, in the future. However, right now, yeah, we don't have those stats into how many jobs were successfully cast on backstage and by who or whom. And is there any feeling of that? Not an exact number, but an idea in your mind? We are starting to get a little bit of data on it because we've recently implemented secure payments on backstage where an employer can pay talent using, um, we use Stripe payments. So it's a credit card processing system. And instead of invoicing, you can just get the credit card directly through backstage um, payments. So we can keep track of those, how many payments were processed through backstage um, and, and, you know, who was the talent that got the payment, we can kind of track that, but it's not on every project. It's not mandatory. It's only if the client wants to use it. So for me, that number is not accurate, especially since it's a new product and a growing product and not everybody uses it. So yeah, we're starting to get some insights, but not the full picture, Tom. Okay. Um, thank you. This is this is the beautiful thing about um about Q and A platforms is that um your question, Tom, just informs Sonia of something that she can come back and go like, oh yeah, this is something that we can be thinking about or something like that. So it's really important that you get your voice in the world and ask the questions because you might have just given. Uh, backstage and inside as to oh well what 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 and why would we do that when could we when could we do it so that's that's cool and I, and I, it's also interesting to find that blend of running your business from the organic right hey I know I know a bunch of people too I make contact with seven point six five percent of you know like there's there's beauty to both of those to both of those ways of of approaching your business so it's good it's good it's all good uh thank you tom what are the questions jeffrey all right next question we have is from kevin cutleaf or cutleaf kevin. perhaps hello hey what's up what's going on um, Hi. all right uh so this question may not even get an answer because it depends on how how close you are in your uh, to the business of backstage and uh, voice one two three. I mean, mergers are kind of worrying. I think these days uh, in the tech world. So, can we expect to see maybe you know price hikes with backstage or more further integration between the two sites or you know? That sort of thing, because, you know, voices, you come from voices and, you know, that platform is a little controversial. So we want to just make sure as voice talent that we are always on our toes. Totally. Fair question. Uh, I can answer by saying that at this time, there's no plans to integrate the platforms. They are very different and they speak different languages. So we, they will continue to exist separately, kind of like sisters. We're like sister platforms right now where we learn from each other and cross promote each other, um, but they will always exist, exist separately. Um, that is the 
that's the the word on the street anyways, um, from what I'm privy to in these conversations, totally understand that mergers are, can be scary and change is scary, but I can assure you that nothing is changing. Um, the companies are still, you know, acting independently and kind of working their businesses independently. If anything, um, they're, they're getting better because we're, we're learning from each other and we're supporting each other and making each other better in many ways. So, um, I don't think there's anything to worry about in terms of price hikes or anything like that. And I don't, I'm not part of those conversations at all. Um, membership price hikes or anything. Yeah. No, no clue about that. I would just assume it's just going to stay the way it is. If it's working, it's going to stay. You use, Thank you. Thank you. Use, uh, oh, uh, uh, you use the, um, the, the, the term umbrella. Right when you were talking about cast and crew, has added this this element of backstage under the umbrella. So it's what you you just explained that that there's these companies that are all under the umbrella of this thing that has a bigger vision of how to serve the entertainment industry on both as talent and client. Right, if you're a payroll company, that's what you do. So that that seems an interesting. That that's what came through for me. So yeah. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Kevin. I think I think it's also uh, I think it's also like when anything shifts, right? When anything shifts that that you want to know, right? Um yeah, you, 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 how 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 is this thing going to work, right? The whole SAG after merger took 300,000 years cuz how is it going to work? Um and now it does. <laughs> it does. So, yeah. Um, awesome, and I don't want to. I don't want to trigger anybody about <laughs> merger um, such things about that. Yeah, um, Jeffrey, where are we at? All Can right, we, we are. Yeah, we have time for a few more. Uh, let's do one more, and then we'll do a quick round of announcements as we're close to wrapping up, and then we will take as many more as we can squeeze in. This one is for Sonia. It's from Patricia Corkum. Okay, Corkum. Patricia, are you still with us? Or are you uh, here? Yep. Let's see. And if so. if you, for some reason you're having audio troubles, I'm more than happy to pose your question for you. Go ahead once. There. Oh, there oh, we go. There. Yep. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I was I was trying to do something in between, but I'll uh, I'll jump off of that. And hi, everybody. Yeah, Sonia, I I got to tell you, I I do like backstage because I think it's it's incredibly rich. I mean, as I got a couple of people have said, it's got everything in the arts plus, um, and for performers. My question, I think, was really about uh, the other platform that I think you've acquired or has been acquired by Backstage recently, Mandy, which I think originally came from um, the United Kingdom. But I, my question kind of goes along with what other people have said about why Voices 1, 2, 3, why Backstage, why this, why that. Um, can you say anything about Mandy? I mean, I do get a flurry of... Um, information from from both backstage and mandy and uh i i've kind of been looking at backstage as being more representative of my needs but specifically in voiceover i guess i'm curious to see if you have any opinion on are they just the same is it just like voices one two three that situation um no actually oh okay yeah. <laughs> so we are integrating with Mandy, um, mm -hmm. just as we've integrated with star now. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, we, the platforms will be the, will run the same profiles mm -hmm. migrate. All of that will migrate into one or, mm -hmm. uh, and that migration will be happening happening soon. Do you have a Mandy platform, Patricia? Or? I do. I do. I I uh, have it for voice actors or voiceover. I think is what it's called. And um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get some communication as things start progressing there with the Great. migration. Um, mm -hmm. 
But I think if anything, the reason Mandy is very strong on the crew side of Mm -hmm. the entertainment industry. So it kind of fills that crew gap for us. Um, I understand. Yeah. So the voiceover opportunities will be the same. And if anything, it's just another platform for you to find jobs on in the UK. Um, Primarily. Yeah, you are right. That's, that's where the most of the jobs are there. So, um, but yeah, you'll get some information to come as things progress with that project. That's great. Great. Well, thank you. Yeah. That's been on my mind for a while only because I'm thinking, do I need to pay for both? I mean, you know, really, it's just, it makes you wonder, but I think it's a discerning buyer that we all have to be when we're using any of these outside resources besides ourselves, you know, for business development. Yeah. And I think that's also, that's also an astute observation that we don't want to build our, as you can see, Mm -hmm. this requires this and that and requires that. So Mm -hmm. as we're building our our voiceover businesses we don't want to just rely on one platform right as right. our revenue stream because something could happen or some right. change or someone could do life yeah. life is interesting right <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll well, have a yeah. Later. yeah but yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks for taking my question sonia i really appreciate it it's a really good uh, session today i appreciate being here thank you thanks patricia we uh, appreciate you yeah uh so we should, should do a little wrap up jeffrey and then like one more question after that or how do we want to roll Absolutely. So uh, we'd like to go around uh, with our esteemed guests and hear a little bit more about how we can keep up. Uh, Sensei Dan, how can the folks, good folks here, keep up with you? Where can we find you? Well, the good folks can contact me. (laughs) My my, uh, website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, that's usually the easiest way. If you write, if there's a you know, contact me and just write whatever it is you got to tell me in that. And I should be able to help you out. But I, I do offer consulting services to help people pass the unbelievable intimidation and misinformation that is out there about home voiceover studios and get it done. So it's done right up front. And then you don't have to worry about all this other stuff that everybody keeps saying, this makes me sound great. Well, who cares? <laughs> I don't care what somebody else sounds like. What's important to you, and how do you sound? Right. And and is your is your audition uh, is your booth auditioning well with you? Like, or is your booth matching your audition skills? Because that that came up today as well. Right. And what work may you not be getting because you don't quite understand what your audio is supposed to sound like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Sam. Uh, all right, Sonia. Um, we have a, another workshop coming up, as previously mentioned, in two weeks with you. Same same dojo time, same dojo channel at this time, uh, 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, yeah, would love to hear uh, anything else. Uh, I'll drop that uh, link to the Backstage VO Talent page in the chat as well. Yeah, and that, that's March 15th is the Get to Know VO, just for a date to put in your... Thank yeah, you. I look forward to chatting with everyone again. That then um definitely check out backstage if you're interested in using it as a resource to find voiceover plus jobs on on the platform. Um if you want to connect with me, I recommend connecting with me on LinkedIn. I'm a heavy LinkedIn user, so sharing lots of resources and things there. So definitely send me a connection request. We can chat over on LinkedIn. And And Jeffrey, you're going to let people know what's coming up at the dojo? Absolutely. So um, what we have coming up for us is... um, We have a few fight clubs. We have quite the lineup coming in for March. Um, So fight club, pro fight club is where it all comes together. It's where we have uh, 12 uh, participants who give their all 
in uh, with guidance and feedback from a casting director, uh, director, producer, agent from within the voiceover industry. So we all get to learn a lot about each respective area about voiceover and also kind of what it takes to, you know, we get to look behind the glass, so to speak, and get a look at what it takes to book that gig. So yeah. coming up for um, this next month in March, we have uh, Carrie Karanen, um, who is going to do live action. Uh, then following that, that's going to be March 9th, um, March 12th. We're going to have, uh, video games with JB Blanc, Blanc, right? Am I saying that uh, right? From, from Blizzard. He's one of the, he's one of the top, uh, directors and also awesome talent. He's, he's amazing. It's so cool that mm -hmm. JB's going to be there. So yeah. Super and then, cool. and then Thursday, March 21st, uh, we are going to have our return a uh, good friend, uh, Chuck Wedge, who works, uh, he's with Leapfrog and does in work with interactive toys. Yeah, yeah. So um, Fight Club, we call it a fiercely friendly face-off that turns the audition process transparent. Um, and uh, if you are a working pro, demo repped and booking, please apply to um, join the Fight Club roster to join as a player, and everyone can be a spectator. So that's an opportunity that happens three times a month that you can you can join at any level. Um, we're also um, we're we're ramping up for our spring session, which starts in April. So wherever you are on your journey, um, uh, we would love to meet you and uh, see how we can help get you where you want to go. Um, with the mystery to mastery program that starts in April and uh, we have launched our self-guided version of our um, of our foundational uh, offering called "You Should Do Voiceover Launchpad." So it's a self-guided version of our um, of our uh, like I said the, the thing that makes <laughs> that we lay the foundations for sustained successful voiceover careers, um, and uh, it's available. Now you can just buy the you can just uh, buy the uh, workout and guide yourself through it, um, and it, uh, I recommend it for all levels just because there's always another way to be thinking about something. And then we also have the option to do the launch pad plus workouts, which are coming up this Saturday. So, um, so uh, Jeffrey, I think we have an offer for everybody here. What is that offer? Yeah, uh, I just dropped it in the chat. Um, so if you go to the link I just placed um, and go to checkout for either Launchpad on its own or Launchpad Plus Workouts, you can type in Dojo50, all one word, Dojo50, all caps, and you'll enjoy a $50 discount on whichever option you go with. Yay, and we're so looking forward to seeing. And um, um, anybody who has any questions or you want to talk some more or want to get some feedback on like or to, to just have some time to talk about where you're at and where you'd like to be. Um, please sign up for a voiceover once over. Um, 15 minutes, we can talk about where exactly that, where you're at and where you want to be um, and uh, how we can help. So I think that's I think that's a good amount of everything. Uh, shall we wrap up with one more question or shall we well, actually let's let's do this. Let's it's um, it's um, 11. It's 11. So let's wrap up with that. Nicely done. And then, um, so do you have a couple more minutes to hang out with a couple more questions? How about you, Dan? I have, I have a heart out right now. So Okay, but, then thank you, my dear, for being here and being such a great resource for everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, if you have to roll, come back next month. But, um, I'll see you tomorrow, though, just hit. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Um, um uh and come back on uh the 15th and we can talk more about everything we've been talking about with sonia and um and if you want to hang out for a couple more minutes we can uh we can um take a couple more questions i see margaret's hand is patiently there um yeah and uh encourage you guys to you know we can, we can talk talk amongst ourselves um cool so now we're in as a sensei after hours um <laughs> How do we want to roll, Jeffrey? <laughs> Let's see. Um, next up, if uh, let me just make sure everybody is still here. Uh, Alex, Alex Azad. You had a question, Alex. Hi, everybody.
Oh, hi, Alex. Okay? Yeah. Oh, it's great to hear your voice because you're pick, like seeing you in the seeing you in the squares. Like, who's that guy? That's awesome. So it's great to hear your voice too. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Um, actually, let me let me scroll back up to my my questions. I didn't write it down, instead I typed it in. My mistake. Um, <laughs> if you need a prompter, I did copy it. So, Dan, yeah. If actually, if you can, uh, yeah, send me. Uh, <laughs> what was yeah, on yeah, my yeah. Mind? What was I'll on my it. mind? <laughs> I'll pop it in the chat. There you go. Um, Oh yeah, so um, I guess this is more of a uh, at least a, a commercial VO question because yeah, we, uh, uh, Sony and Tish, I think you both mentioned this about half hour ago that uh, at least the, for certain commercial sounds that uh, uh, a lot of casting directors are kind of looking for like a a casual, non typical commercial sounding voice. What if somebody's natural voice doesn't quite fit that profile? Um, is it just something that we're we just have to listen to a lot more of those types of auditions to try to mimic that but mimic it authentically i don't know if that question is yeah correctly, but uh, i think I it, you know if 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 if, a, if an announcery if a booming announcery voice is what is needed there's plenty of booming announcery voices you have like do what you do mm -hmm. um you know and find your version of what it like again i think it goes back to that what is your version alex of your polished read of your and i even i even avoid the word read of your take your take what is your take on this is my take on it um and let it be right you don't have to be the ram tough guy because there's there's a bunch of ram tough guys here right sure, so sure. don't worry about that what is your version of grit what is your version of you know your version of tough um you know and that might that might be on the, the spectrum of of human emotions like your tough might be more edgy or something like that right i'm just meeting and hearing you for 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 the first time but mm -hmm. like don't worry about that do you and the jobs that you will be right for and then have your versions of like what you wear to the academy awards will be different than what someone else does because that's why you're going to express your style at that highest level of polish right you see what i'm saying so so yeah but if you know and it's it's kind of like it's kind of i think also um you know it's been cool in terms of the the dei the diversity equality and inclusion that's happening in the industry if we want someone that's like that let's get someone who's like that right mm -hmm. um so it's a, it's a little bit a little bit like that is that is that helpful Th that is helpful yeah um yeah. I, I think for, really, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry just to add to what you were saying there tish i think 100 percent what tish is saying is correct in that finding your version of those adjectives right what does that in your voice sound like but i think for commercial reads specifically when they're at, when they're saying not salesy or not announcery or not that what does that sound like without it sounding messy that was your question i think what what folks or the corporate or the commercial, you know, the creative agency folks that they're looking for someone that just sounds relatable. All of it is about relatable content that they're trying to produce and share. And with, you know, TikTok and social media and all of that, they just want people that sound real and sound like themselves. So just read it as if you were just talking to your to your friends, you know? Um, yeah, to personalize it a bit more too. Totally, yeah, okay. that's and what they're also, looking for. Also the key is nobody wants anything to sound like anything. The key is how does it make me feel? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yes. how do I feel? Um, you know, oh, wow, it felt like he was really talking to me. Oh, wow, that sounds like my best friend. Like, or, you know, that's the guy, yeah. Oh, I know that guy, yeah. It sounds like he's talking to me. Oh, he's, yeah, who's that guy, right? But it's it's how it's not so much about you as about how are you making me feel, right? Gotcha. So if you go, hello, I'm Alex Lazard, um, you're like, okay, cool. You're like, hey man, I'm I'm Alex. Hi, how are you? Right? That that's how you make me feel, right? Sure. And if you're going in for a bank loan, then yeah, you know. Uh, present yourself in a way yeah so good 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 excellent hope that was helpful 
that is that makes a lot more sense than the way I've been reading copy for the last year and a half. So yeah, well, and, and just do do a little switch of don't read copy, share copy. Share copy. You don't reading any Jimmy can read this. We get paid money because we share it, right? Uh, no, no offense to all of our lovely Jimmys and Jameses here. Um, yeah, um, yeah. There's something else, but I forgot. So, good, good questions. Good questions. Yes. Oh, uh, what else? What else? Uh, we have one from Terrell. Terrell Kennett. Hey, Terrell, how are you? Hi, it's Terrell. Terrell, <laughs> we know that. I always tell everybody: Terrell, Cheryl, Meryl, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, I, I tend to be a savvy shopper and especially now when like your heating bills 200% more your food costs 300% more so Sonia do you have any sales coming up on membership for VO? I don't know I don't work on that oh, I, I, okay I, I when you were talking a few minutes ago I thought I bet she's she's not gonna be able to know but I'd like to ask anyone <laughs> Hint, hint. <laughs> and and Terrell, you're living you're living the first rule of the dojo. Know what you want, ask for it. People will give it to you if they can, and if not, you know, if you allow. And then, so Sonia doesn't know, so ask somebody else, or oh, yes. ask, ask Sonia. Can you ask somebody when you come back next time? But yeah, I checked online, and and there yeah. was a, a couple of posts said they tend to have sales. So I thought maybe oh, good, that's good. now. So, so now that you're here in relationship with Sonia, you can go like, hey, Sonia, when you're coming back. Um, yeah, yeah on the 15th, the Ides of March could be a good sign for a change. <laughs> But that's 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 awesome. That's awesome. And as savvy business owners, if we can if we can save save money on investing in the platforms that are we are running our business on, that's that's good. That's good business. So yeah. All righty. Thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Alex. Yeah. Thanks for being here. What else? Got a couple more minutes. Yeah. Um. Well, I I think Terry Briscoe had to bounce. Um, oh no, he's still what, in here. Can I have a question? Uh, we, we, we had your question, Kev. So we're gonna we're gonna take a couple more questions. Um, so hold on, hold on one second with that thought. We'll see if we have time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Margaret had a question. Did your question get answered, Margaret? It was an errant hand raise. <laughs> oh, sort of like a a Zoom butt dial. Exactly. Uh, okay. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Good. Love that. Um. Yeah. Uh, any other questions that from anyone that we haven't heard from yet, um, Jeffrey? Jenny Grace Morris had one. Oh, Jenny. Hi. Yes. And several people did respond uh, because it was about, do we need an agent in order to submit or aud audition for backstage? Oh, gosh, uh, no. Guess... It's the opposite. Okay. Yeah, super, so, supersonic, the opposite, like backstage is a place where you can start getting work yourself so that you can have jobs that when you go meet with an agent, you're like, oh, hey, here's 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 the client list that I have because I've been working and developing uh, my business. I've been doing my business development and I have working relationships with this client and this client and I've booked this much jobs by myself. So if you're interested in working with someone who's working, let's see if you're the right fit for me. That's, you know, that's how you approach it. But yeah, no, absolutely. If you do have an agent, it, it's fine. Um, uh, you know, it might be that it might be that the, that the, um, that the um, budgets of the projects that might be on backstage may be lower than what an agent is looking for, but that's, but that doesn't matter because money is money. And so, yeah, but you don't, you don't need to have an agent. You, you don't have a need, need to have an agent ever. You, you can, right. build beautiful, you can build a beautiful, gorgeous, well, you know, income producing, um, income producing career without an agent uh from wherever you are yeah what's so your thought this is a membership site so we would become a member of backstage and then we would have access to actually auditioning for when we see an audition come in and think oh this would be great for for me and then you just submit an audition but we okay. like to say we like to say deliver our product at the dojo yeah. Oh, okay. Deliver. 
submit our audition. Oh, we we have no power. We deliver okay. our products. That deliver is going deliver our product. product. I love that. Okay, you yeah. probably told it to me, but I didn't write it down. Okay, deliver our product. That's beautiful. What's your thoughts, Sonia? Any thoughts on that? Um, no, you nailed it on the head, Tish. You did. Yeah. Boom. Question. Yeah, I, I would suggest coming to the one on the 15th if you're available, because I can show you a bit more then. Oh, yeah. wonderful. And mm -hmm. connect with you on LinkedIn. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Jenny, it's great. It's great to have your point of view, because if you are coming from voiceover from realms that are not part of the entertainment industry, like if you if you went to theater school or something, you know what backstage is, you know how you kind of know how things go. But if you're coming from other realms, you may not know how things work. So it's a great question to ask. Um, and then you get to know the places and how they how they work. So um, um, you yeah, know, that's cool. That's you wonderful. Have to come from a back, you don't have to come from an acting background to do voiceover and have a, a, a great career. Um, you do what, what you need to bring is the things that great actors do, um, but you don't have to come from that background. And then that's just figuring out how this business works. So cool. Oh, thank awesome. you. We got like two more minutes. You want to do one more question, Jeffrey? One more question. Um, let me see if I can find a good one. I'll bounce around. Um, can I have a question? Uh, hold on, hold on, Kevin. We're gonna get questions from uh, people who haven't asked yet, and then if you have questions, we can talk about it tomorrow. But if we have time, we'll we'll get to you. Okay. Let's have Gretchen. Is Gretchen still on the call? Um, no, but I'll I'll pose it for Gretchen. It'll be probably a quick one. Um, it was for Sonia and maybe Dan. Um, what would you say are the big three in the pay to play casting sites currently? Uh, again, you know, it's where are you located and what are you looking for is kind of the, the main, um, the answer to that. I would, I mean, I always want to push backstage, right? <laughs> That's who I work for. Backstage is the best. Um, but I, if you're looking for voiceover work specifically, I um, definitely recommend um, voice one, two, three. Um, if you're in the Europe at all, um, I know Badalgo has a really big presence there. Um, and um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to, I don't want to promote other, other platforms that I don't know a ton about, to be yeah. honest. So um, yeah, go, go to backstage, go to voice one, two, three. <laughs> excellent. excellent. <laughs> Perfect. Um, we're, we're here. I said, this is going to be a very chill and Sonia, I got to hand it to you. These are, these are some very good penetrative questions and you're navigating them wonderfully. <laughs> okay. um, Kevin, I, I, you've been waiting so patiently. Kevin, is it a quick question? If it is, we, I think we can squeeze it in. Okay, so a very quick question about you. Um, when are you going to be working on an animation project then? Oh. I, I think we we already are articulated, uh, Kevin, that that Sonia doesn't work on uh, she doesn't work on projects. She creates opportunities. She brings people who need talent for animation projects. She brings them together with the talent. Uh, so that's what she does. She builds relationships, as she was saying, with like up and coming animators and creates opportunities where they can connect with talent. So she's not. She's not doing animation projects herself. She's creating the opportunity. So that's that's a great reason to uh, check out what's happening on backstage and seeing what animation projects are there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I would love to see you again uh, very soon in a few weeks then, Sonia, for a great uh, webinar, uh, Zoom meeting one. Sounds right. great. Thanks, Kevin. Awesome. All right, everybody. Uh, Sonia, thank you for the extra little bit of time. Thanks for everyone for hanging out. Um, look forward to um, to getting to talk with all of you. Um, this spring, I would love for this to be your spring to spring forward with your voiceover career. Um, if you're a dojo member who's been part, give me a call because we're 
we're um we'd, we'd love to hear from you and if you haven't yet um give me a call too give us a call we, we, we'd love to talk with you and see how we can help you mo move forward um great stuff everybody great questions i think i think the real path to your sustained successful career and one of the things we do at the dojo is how can you under how can you be the real thing is that you just need to keep on asking great questions because that means how are you piecing things together? What are you thinking about? How are you exploring and finding ways through where you are stuck or you don't know? It's a powerful, powerful way of being. And that's how sustained, successful voiceover careers are built. So well done. All right. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Jeffrey, for keeping everything moving beautifully. And uh, look forward to seeing you all for Sonia next time and uh, on Launchpad and uh, all of the above. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow. Cheers. See you, Kevin. Bye.